Thank you, Dr. Siva Paul. In the next 15, uh, 45 minutes, I would like to convey the message about the concerning of the, the point of concerning for Dolutikavir. Firstly, I would like to thank the HIPNET and the patient who permit their story and photo for the presentation. Before I start, I would like to have ever prescribed Dolutikavir. Please raise your hand. Not too many, no? <laughs> We have never placed high. We didn't know about this name. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the chronology of the antiretrovirus. We start in the 1987 with the uh, liver transcriptase inhibitor. And the second class is a protease inhibitor, which is very potent. And 20 years later, we found the intricate strand transfer inhibitor, which the first one is the low ticavir, and then the low ticavir, heavy ticavir, and the last one is big ticavir. So the FDA approved the HIV medicine that I told you, the cytopedia in the second class in 1995. So is the first protease inhibitor, and nevirapine is the first in NRTI uh, class, and in two, 2007, the Lauticavir, and the Lauticavir is in 2013. When we look for the last eight year, most of the medicine approved are in the fixed dose combination, and more than half are the indicate transfer inhibitor fixed dose combination, like the Stabil, Diumec, Genvosa, Juruka, and the last one, Victory. So when we talk about the intricate transfer inhibitor, the basic structure have a three basic structure. The first one is a metal chelating core, this one. And the second one is halogenated phenylalanine. And the side chain is different between the each, each, uh, uh, each uh, intricate. So the Dolutegravir is something like this. So this is a picture just to show you the medicine, the tablet of each one. And mostly they are in, not now already in the big, big dose combination. Okay, Dolutegravir was claimed to be one of the best antiretrovirus because of the potency is really high. More than three log of the viral load subplace. And I also have the good genetic barrier to resistance, this one. So that's why the guideline choose the dolutigavir and the dolunavir to be the first line drug. Dolutigavir was claimed to be the second generation because it's superior and non-inferior when compared to the effervalent dolunavir and the lauticavir base. It has a high barrier resistance it is active against the resistance strain of the lauticavir and eriticavir. And it's also it's a once daily. The lauticavir is a, before it's a twice daily and has a need not to get the boosting and they have the single tablet regimen. And the last short point is a well tolerated with a few serious side effects. This is a tablet, it's 50 milligram and in the fixed load combination in terms of time. This is a comparative efficacy study of the Dolutigavir when compared to the other medicine before it was came to be the first slide up. In the single study on New England Journal in 2013, when compared to the Effavalin, and in Femico study in the Lancet 2014, when compared to the Dolunavir, it was a team, seemed to be the efficacy is superior than the Effavalin and Dalunavir. And when compared to the first slide duct of the intricate sensor inhibitor of the Lauticavir, it is uh, not, uh, not infiliate. In terms of the genetic value, I already told you that uh, the Lauticavir has a low resistant value. So that's why it's what came to be one of the best choice nowadays. The profile comparison between the intricate transfer inhibitor among the lauticavir, eviticavir, and doruticavir, we can observe that doruticavir have the advantage in terms of the tolerability, in terms of the high genetic barrier, 
and low duck duck interaction and have the single pew regimen. Since 2016, most of the guidelines recommend as Dolita Korea to be the preferred initial first line regimen. And in 2018, WHO have already changed. Uh, before in 2016, it is not the preferred regimen, but in 2018, it's already put in the WHO guideline as a first line preferred. The current guidelines of the DHS guideline in last October, the 25th of October, mentioned that the logic of where is be the first initial regimen to be recommended because as a status of the A1, as a Dolotikavir, Abakavir, and 3TC, and the A1 as a Dolotikavir plus Dinovovir and FTC. And also it's recommended the initial regimen in a certain clinical situation in a two drugs that you may have heard from the lunch symposium of the Dolotikavir and 3TC as a B1 state. So let's go to the part of the, of the patient. My first patient, he's a young MSM man, 30 years old, well-educated, good-looking like this, body weight 58, have the, just diagnosed last two years, in July 2017, with the high initial CD4 for 55, never be treated, HBS antigen negative, VDIL negative, creatinine systems uh, good length, He's in, he's a clever man. So he into, he review, internet reviewing. And when he came to see me, he preferred to choose in the case transfer with the single tablet regimen. And he mentioned Taiwumek. It's a combination of the Abakavir, 2TC, and Dolotikavir. This is a, the chart that he showed me. And this is a, the one that he chose with the HLA B5701 is negative. So if you are the, his doctor, he's a very good care on diet, exercise, he's a young man, new generation, food supplement oriented, no underlying disease. On medication, only the supplement like a multivitamin, calcium, ion, and uh, he used some time when his meal schedule is postponed and he is aware of the dyspepsia. So what will be you advise him? First, well, nothing. He already clever, no significant. Uh, you want to stress him that he should separate the antacid two hours before and six hours after of the diuretic area, or you will try to separate the antacid calcium two hours before and six hours after or you would, would like to separate all entire medicine that you take two hours and six hours after the road, or you have no idea. Uh, sorry. Okay, please vote. What, what number that you would like to spread to him uh, before you prescribe the Dolutikavir? Oh, okay. The, night, the, the maximum one is straight that the, all of the entire medicine should be the separate, and the second one is the, only the calcium and the, and the, okay, the calcium and antacid. So yeah, I would like to stress to you that the integrated transfer inhibitor they have to contain two key components: the key label and Legion and hydrophobic legion, which is uh, in, have an interaction with the metal cation containing medication like uh, antacid. So the dolutikavir may form the complex with the magnesium and the alu aluminum containing in antacid. It can form complex with the calcium and ion supplement or even vitamins, resulting in the reduction of the exposure to dolutikavir. So this is a study in the 2011 by Petard that if you take the dolutegravir with the antacid in the red line, you can see that the exposure or the level of the dolutegravir will be reduced more than half. 
And if you take it with the anthracite, you have to separate it two hours. Take the, uh, the dolutic beer before the anthracite two hours, or the anthracite two hours after the dolutic beer that, to, that you can boost the level to be similar to the dolutic beer alone. So you have to separate the dolutic beer with anthracite two hours. And uh, about the calcium, the calcium supplement, this is a study about the calcium carbonate supplement. If you take the dolutegria and the separate two hours, you can see that the level is similar. But if you take the dolutegria with the calcium in the fast, you can see the level of the dolutegria will be reduced. But if you take it together with the food, this can uh, uh, boost the dolutic beer level to be similar to the dolutic beer. So if this young man want to take the calcium supplement, you have to stress him that you have to take with food or uh, to our uh, separate. About, about the furless fumarate, it's uh, similar with the calcium. You have to take it uh, to our uh, separate or uh, with the food, together with the food. This is just to show the interaction, the effect concentration of this drug that can reduce the dose of the luticavir. You can see the maximum with the antacid can reduce the early under curve up to 75%. So the clinical comment is to declare, uh, because of the decrease of the luticavir plasma concentration, it recommends that you have to take the luticavir two hours before or six hours after the antacid. It's similar to the ion and the calcium that can be suppressed or de decrease the, the level up to 50 or 40 percent. Okay, after four weeks that he take the, the luticavir, his creatinine loss to from 0.8 to 0.92. He was quite concerned, this young man, and asked you or asked me, what will be our explanation or plan for him? The rising of creatinine could be the lab variation. Follow up the creatinine next three months. Uh, the ultimate is cell deteriorate renal function. So we have to reduce or adjust the dose. Or it might be the dose effect. We have to follow up next three months. Or you have no idea. Okay, uh, maybe you take a choice that uh, to most of you are the delta V effect that can increase the creatinine level and follow up next three months. Okay, I think this slide is really important for the one who will use a dolutecovir. You have to know that dolutecovir can inhibit the organic anti-ion transporter or OCT2. It can uh, reduce the uh, tubular secretion of the creatinine. This is from the plasma, the retrovia, and lupulin is here, inhibit the OCT2. So the transportation of the creatinine from the plasma to the urine uh, is not inhibit, is inhibit. So this is, can cause the rising of the creatinine in the plasma side, about 1.1 to 1.5 milligram per milliliter within two weeks. And it remains stable. So then in the first month, the level of creatinine will be rise a bit, 0.1 or 1.5. And after four weeks, it should be stable. This is a slide show in the subject in the spring two, effect of the dolutecovir in the creatinine le uh, serum level when compared to the lauticovir. So you can see that there is a rising of the uh, creatinine, but it will be stable up to 48 weeks or even the 96 weeks. There is a rising of the creatinine. Not only the renal uh, side effects are undesirable. The luticavir also have the, uh, and the, and the insomnia. 
and head edge, head edge, and the comparison with the with the other drug. So in the IAS guideline and the S guideline also mentioned that whenever you use a dorotecovir, you have to know that uh, your patient will con confide with the insomnia or the head edge. That might be you have to to counsel them before they using it. This is the slide to show that the insomnia is one of the side effects of the doluticavir. When in the, in the different study, and in the, some study is up to 17% similar, like when you use the effavalent. So in the package insert of the doluticavir, it defines the side effect into be common and very common. For very common, it means that the side effect is happen in one, one of more than one in ten patients. For the common, they define it as one in ten, between one in ten and to one in one hundred. So the very common side effect of the dorotovia is a headache, nausea and diarrhea. And the common side effect is a dizziness, insomnia, and a abnormal dream and depression. Okay, the case two. We move from the young man to be the businessman. Get older. <laughs> 56 years old, businessman, rich. <laughs> and uh, he has a problem of the ART more than 10 years. And uh, current antiretrovirology, 3TC, tenofovir, and lopinavir. He has a diabetes, type 2. He has a dyslipidemia. He has a hypertension. He have the good. His current medicine is lipicide, metformin for the diabetes mellitus, metoprolol, losuvastatin, omnipasone. So the doctor aiming to reduce the lopinavir metabolic complication side effect by replace the lutecovir. What will be the drug interaction with the rotavir among of his persistent medicine that he used? A metformin to metoprolol, C omnipasol, low suvastatin. Again, I don't know. I think this one is easy, maybe the most easiest one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no one choose metoprolol. <laughs> okay, 17 choose metformin. I think this one is a very important information that Doritovir will inhibit OC2 in kidney. And the metformin is actually unchanged in julin. So mainly to the OCT2. So if you use a doluticavir with the metformin, the plasma exposure of the metformin will increase. This is very important. And the more you use doluticavir, the more increased level of the metformin. It's a dose dependent. This is a study in the year 2014. When you use a metformin with the doluticavir 50 milligram, the level of uh, metformin will increase. And when you increase the dose of doluticavir in the resistant case to be 50 milligram every 12 hours, you can see the level of the metformin is more increased. <coughs> so be careful. When you use a metformin, this is one of the common drugs that the patient use. There is an effect of the concentration to the doluticavir. If you, the, your dose of doluticavir is 50 mg once daily, uh, the area on the curve of the metformin will increase up to 80%. But if your doluticavir is up to twice daily for the resistant case, the LA under curve of the metformin increased up to nearly 150%. So you have to monitor and be consider the metformin dose adjustment when you start or you stop the doluticavir. This is very really important. So one of the most uh, drug interaction of the doluticavir you have to know is uh, metformin. 
This is a study of the Dothukavir once daily and twice daily, and also in the big Tikavir that you can see that the level of the metformin level is high. And there is a stress that usually is not cause of the lactic acidosis, very rare, but you have to avoid the high metformin dose like a two gram per day, especially in the patient who are uh, moderate uh, renal function impairment, like uh, getting a uh, GFR lesser than 60. Okay, the last case. We have two cases of a man, one case of the lady, young lady. Anong. Anong is uh, 24 years old, poor compliance, failing to previous ART regimen. Her first regimen is uh, Tidonphobia uh, FTC, Effervalent. After failing, she was prescribed SAT, 3TC, and lopinavir. She could not tolerate lopinavir. She always complained. So the doctor planned to ease her compliance by using single tablet regimen, abacavir, 3TC, and doluticavir. Regarding to using the doluticavir for unknown or this young lady, what should you do? The first one, you will perform pregnancy test. Second, provide effective contraception. Three, uh, you have learned about the dirty side effect in the first trimester, so we, you, you will not use, you will use a big ticker instead. Please vote. Oh, the C, D, which is collect. That is, I have to perform the pregnancy test and uh, provide the effective information of the... Okay. I, I think you, you, everyone should learn or know about the Tepamo study. Tepamo study started in the August 2014 in Botswana. was aimed to assess the list of the adverse birth outcome associated with the HIV infection with the antiretrovirus drug regimen. And the second objective is to evaluate the neural tube defects among the infants exposed to the uh, conception of the effervalent at that time in 2014. But in 2016 in Botswana, they switched the first line from effluent base to be the doluticavir base. So there may be some woman patient on the doluticavir and get the pregnancy. So in 2018 May, WHO requests that in the TEPAMO study, you, could you show us uh, the preliminary data of the pregnant outcome in dolutricavir before the pregnant? That means that the woman who got the, received the dolutricavir and got pregnancy, what is the outcome of this pregnant on the dolutricavir since the contraception? When the TEPAMO ana analyzed in the first May of 2018, at that time only 426 pregnant women, uh, only 2% of all pregnant women that are HIV positive received the dolutricavir at the conception. So they found that four of the 426 uh, is mean that 0.94% got the new log 2 defect. When compared to the non dolutricavir base, it's only 0.12. Compared to F4, like it's 0.05. Uh, if the doctor is using after the first, uh, first trimester, that means that in the late trimester, there is no neural tube defect happen occur. So it's a higher neural tube defect prevalence in the exposure at conception in fan when compared with the doticavir. So you remember in May, June last year, there is an announce of the WHO warning about the, the side effect of doticavir in, in the one who pregnant who got the doticavir since the conception. This is very high when compared to the other lady on the other regimen. Anyhow, in July 2018, 
when there's a more pregnant woman on Dorigavir, got pregnancy and delivered up to 596. There is no new case of neural tooth defect. So the prevalence is on 0.67 reduced. So it's aimed that the investigators suggest that the, this data we have to follow and we have the plan to analyze in the March this year. So next two and a half months, we will have the new data. It may be similar to the effluent story or not. In the DH guideline last October, they, mean they used the, the data in the July 2018 that among the 596 women have the neural tube defect four case, it means the 0.67 when compared to the other regimen, only 0.1. So it's still recommend that not, not use the, the reticavir within 12 weeks of the post-conception or not recommend in the lady who will not who have potential pregnant but have no effective contraception. So this is a guideline use of the deuterium in the woman. You can see in the list of all guidelines, uh, in the late or the early, early pregnancy, it's uh, forbidden for using the deuterium. But for the child belly who have effective contraception, you allow to have the deuterium. Okay, I think uh, I to the finish with the point to concern when you're using the the use of dorotikavir. The first one I point the uh, adverse event, not only the slightly increase of the creatinine temp uh, temporarily, but also the insomnia, the psychotic adverse event. The second one I mentioned about the drug drug interaction of the polyvalent cation and dorotikavir and the metformin and dolitikavir. And the last one, I talk about the neurotil defect in the female. And you have to be aware to use a female child bearing in the early pregnancy use. My last concern, not that three point, but in fact, it's a dolitikavir availability in Thailand. It's, a, it's a one of the unfortunately that even the Dorotaquia can be announced that we have a chance to use in April 2018, I have a chance to use a combination pill in a very cheap price in the low middle income pay, uh, country. But in Thailand, in the green one, you can see it outside the license anime. But in fact, it's, uh, we can use it by can procure the generic drugs. But now today, even today, when I stand here, we did not have the Rotavia in hand of the national drug policy. So uh, I hope that my FDA that we hear, or I think you agree, that we hope that Thai HIV patients need not to wait too long official process to, get the, to have the Rotavia legislation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Julie for your excellent talk. So now we are, have a time for a question from the floor. Uh, I have a question. Uh, in Thailand, do you recommend the theoretical wear base for the first line to every patient in Thailand? If the drug are available, uh, you will recommend? Uh, we have the draft for the new guideline. Our mm -hmm. current guideline is uh, 2017 and 2018, January. So we are now in the period of drafting the, the guideline, and we plan to put, put and push, push. <laughs> the little to be the first line up because that to push the FDA that uh, if we did not put it in the first line, maybe the FDA will not recognize that it's an uh, it's, uh, essential drug now. Uh -huh. And uh, do we have to worry about the drug resistance? I mean, if you use uh, the theoretical we are in more, and do, do we have to worry about the drug resistance? Yeah, I think that uh, Thai, Thai patient is a uh, proof them, him, themselves that the, the adherence not so bad, in fact. Uh, we, we, we learned that they, they only the a number of patients. So the theoretical profile, if you use in the combination, they did not show uh, about the the drug resistant or failure. But if you use it with, with the single, there is a, someone study about using the Dota V alone. 
is it a half of the mention just only the day before yesterday in the 10th of January or something that the, the factor that predict that the, the resistance in using the dolutical via monotropy is depend on the, the level of the CD4, the level of the viral load and the duration that they are on the HIV before the treatment. Maybe okay. some questions from the audience. Yeah. Thank you. Question. Maybe oh, okay. gentleman so, first. <laughs> <laughs> For Leno, gentleman so, first. Doctor, <laughs> doctor, doctor Anjali, go so, first. Um, uh, so I just would like to, to ask the speaker and also the audience in terms of uh, scale, scale up using the career in this region. Because of four African countries, the WHO promote that because they have high prevalence of uh, drug resistance, high prevalence of in, in RTI resistance. So I don't know whether do you have any idea whether we should follow up on the WHO recommendation or we still using in an RTI based regimen. So right now for uh, DTG, I think the, the issue is about, uh, as she said, about the uh, pregnancy outcome. And also another thing is that we need more data on uh, tuberculosis treatment for DTG. So, uh, so any, anyone have an idea whether we, we should scale up using this drug in the region? Is there any com, com, Cambodian audience? Doctor, I, I heard that you have a chance to use the... the oh, yeah. They, 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 so they, they have a chance to use all cheap drugs yeah. compared to Thailand, actually. Yeah, Come to comment. So from uh, any colleague about from... About your experience of using that we, we will convey to our government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So any colleague from like a Cambodia or Myanmar, do you have any... Any idea on that? Or we just go with DTG because it's a potent high genetic barrier, so we should like a, uh, put heart uh, to, 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 to uh, hit, hit heart to the, the virus and then we don't think about the drug resistance in the future. Or I think so now we, we uh, expand to rapid ART. So maybe we need the simple regimen for the patient and no uh, drug resistance requirement. Also, what, what do you think? Uh, for, sorry, for Myanmar situation, um, drug resistance is a very limited option in my country. Uh, we only have one nationwide study, which was then organized with the ratio in 2017, one drug resistance survey. Uh, regarding uh, DDG, um, I think for us it's uh, difficult to say that because it just started uh, DDG use in the country and we are solely relying on global fund and uh, the DDG is also, we have limited use of DDG so I think we cannot say much about it, we, we cannot picky about it yet for the time being. Eugene and Good, good afternoon, Adan. Um, uh, excellent talk, by the way. Um, thank you for that. My name is Carlos Takdalan. I, I work for the Thai Red Cross AIDS Research Center, and I work for the acute cohort. And we switch participants from efavirenz to tolotegravir. And we see one of the AEs that you mentioned, the increase in creatinine. Uh, what happened is that our some of our patients actually had more, had a greater decrease in their EGFRs. So some of them had like more than 30% decrease, or some of them had less than 60 EGFR. And what we did was we used cystatin C yeah. to confirm the, the EGFR decrease. And when we used cystatin C, it was, it was actually not, did not change or it, or it was normal. The problem is that cystatin C is expensive. And I don't think it's scalable in like if we roll it out. So my question would be, do you have any Test that would confirm the the renal function, or if you have any other parameters that you use for the kidney function. Yeah, I have already talked about the uh, the mechanism of the lysing of the creatinine. Usually, it will lyse only the two or four weeks at the beginning, 
and the magnitude usually is uh, only not more than 15% or, or just only 0.1 to 0.15 elevation of the baseline creatinine. And after the four weeks, this one should be uh, steady, even now until the 96 weeks. If you have, of course, there may be some patient that the increase of the creatinine is from other factor. So it is not, it's a magnitude is really high and there is a in, increase after four weeks, you have to look for the other factor that can cause the rising of the creatinine, especially if, when you use the, the uh, tenophobia with the regimen. The price of the doticavir in Thailand is still very high for the, the, for the, from the Glaxo company. But we, we know that in the generic drug, like in India, it's very cheap. And, and in fact, I show you the, the slide that we are in the country in the green color that we can procure the generic drug. But the process is really steady, really slowly. Eugene, any comment? I see. Where is Eugene now? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> We, we do see far, uh, far more decreases than in the Caucasian in the spring studies. So I think for, for clinicians in the region, it's going to be very confusing. We really see decreases uh, of, of 30%. So I think we're going to get a lot of patients with workup if we don't have other means to, yeah, yeah. to figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe careful. So the, the issue is that because when you use Dolitecovia, you combine with a back career or we combine with genophobia. So if, if, if we combine with Chinophobia, how do you know that this is because of the inhibit secretion or because of tula dysfunction from TDF? So maybe we have to look at, I think, the proteinuria. So maybe proteinuria is another useful marker to look at. I think there's what one hand. One, one, that one, that one, until it is. Oh, sorry. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, I'm from uh, Asian Harm Reduction Network, Myanmar. I just would like to share our experience on using in DDG because we have one project uh, for HCV and HIV co-infection, and uh, especially among the people who inject drug. So DDG, which is uh, the drug of choice, especially among the clients who are taking methadone because it has no drug interaction with uh, uh, methadone. And also, uh, in, in our study, after uh, uh, initiating with DTG, the virology response is very good. And after six months, uh, because we have around 300 clients uh, who are on HCV and HIV co-infection, and almost everyone, they have viral suppress. Yeah. Thank you for your comment and information. Another comments or question? Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sulilat.